Hello everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to the session number two, Introduction to Double Integral. So as uh, all, all you uh, know, uh, the meaning of definite integral, definite integral a to b f of x dx represents, yes, it represents area under the curve. Okay, so it represents the area under the curve. Now why th uh, this integration represents area under the curve uh, you already learned this part but just uh, i'm giving the introduction again we divide so this is y equal to fx curve y equal to fx is a curve between the ordinate x equal to a and x equal to b between these two lines and x axis if you divide this area into the rectangles for example if i take these uh, rectangles here like this so I will take this rectangle, there is one more somewhere here, it may be like this, again next, okay, uh, you will see all these rectangles are there, and say the last one is here. Now, uh, when we uh, divide this area into the number of rectangles, we, we know the area of rectangle. For the area of any rectangle, see, uh, the, suppose the width is a dx. dx is a width. The height is approximately equal to fx. It was not necessary every time fx because there is always an error. So this, this, this portion is not covered because it is not part of the rectangle. So this, this is an error here. So th these errors are there. So that are possible errors are there. So but we are going to get, when we uh, sum up the area, we get the area in terms of a rectangle. So area of one rectangle, what is the area of this one rectangle? Area of one rectangle is length into breadth, so fx into dx. fx into dx is the area of one rectangle. But when dx is a infinitely small, so it is very, very small, dx tends to zero, means when we break these rectangles into very small rectangles, we will divide again number of rectangles here will make small rectangles of very small thickness then that summation is converted to the integral and we'll get integral fx dx that is from a to b and it will not be approximate area now it is a complete area or the correct area under the curve so area under the curve is given by integration a to b fx dx this fx dx is actually the area of one rectangle and that we are integrating provided dx tends to a zero very very small it's very small. That way, uh, we say uh, in definite integral, we say uh, this gives us geometrically the area under the curve. Now, if one definite integral uh, represents the area under the curve, then what about then what about the double integration? Okay. So, what is the geometrical meaning of this double integral now? So, double integral generally given like this: integral a to b, c to d, f of x, y, dx, dy. Not necessary, always these limits are constant. Inner limits, sometimes they are variable limits. We'll come to that with numericals later on. But right now, for simplicity, I take on this double integral, one example of double integral. Now, what is the meaning or what is the geometrical meaning for this double integral now? In the similar way, what we see in here, that single integral gives us the area under the curve. This double integral gives us uh, volume under the surface z equal to f of x y so we have to draw z equal to f of x y surface the relation between three variable represents the surface like a relation between two variable represents this curve y equal to fx so if you have z equal to f of x y suppose this is the top surface there now for this surface uh, volume under the surface uh, z equal to f of x y over the region bounded by these curves say x equal to c x equal to d y equal to a y equal to b if you draw these four straight lines so base will just something like a rectangle there and uh, here actually uh, the volume of uh, sorry this double integration is approximated by the sum of the volume of the cuboids so we have the cuboids here cuboids are uh, a cuboid is a solid which have the rectangular surfaces like this so if, if I want to draw one of the cuboid like this, so you will see uh, this may be my one uh, height and another height I can draw like this. And I will join this. So this is my one of the cuboid. 
okay so when when i draw one of the cuboid here uh, here uh, this way okay you will observe uh, the uh, width is a dx uh, and uh, say length is a dy so dx dy is uh, again dx and dy tends to a very very small if we break it so uh, we, we can fill up we can fill up this uh, solid with the help with these cuboids where dx and dy are tending to zero and then double integral so this is a dx dy is the area of a base and this f of xy f of xy is a height height of that cuboid so uh, area of a base into height is the volume of one cuboid this is the volume of one of the cuboid under that surface okay f of xy dx dy is the volume of one of the cuboid under that surface and then if we double integrate over that entire base entire base where dx and dy tends to zero we get double integration uh, as volume under the surface z equal to f of x y so that is the geometrical meaning in short so right now in simple words you remember the height of the solid is from z equal to 0 to z equal to f of x y and this double integral gives you the area of the base area of base into the height where height is not a constant height is varying with a function of x y x and y are variable then we can find the volume under the surface by using the double integration that is a geometrical meaning that is a geometrical meaning for the double integral but uh, the meaning of double integral changes with the meaning of that f of x y as i told if f of x y represents the height of the solid we get double integration as a volume this double integral will represent the volume under the surface provided f of x y is a height but if same f of x y is one if f of x y is one that means we get double integral dx dy only that gives us the area only area of the region so area of the lamina area of the region we can calculate provided we have that f of x y is one so double integral dx dy is a area next same double integral can be considered as a mass of the mass of a lamina now what is a lamina first lamina is a surface a lamina is a region which have a very negligible thickness like the uh, page page of the notebook you can page of the textbook you can take uh, any page uh, okay that can be considered as a lamina so if we want to find out the mass of the lamina mass of lamina then if that f of x y represents the density if f of x y is a density of that lamina then double integral f of x y dx dy gives you the mass of that lamina remember uh, the simplest if the density is a uniform we have density into the area density into area will be the mass of lamina provided the density is a constant but here this density is a variable it can be a variable with respect to x and y in terms of x and y so if uh, density is not constant we can use this so not only that double integration can be used to calculate the centroid of the region or that lamina we can calculate the center 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 of the region center of region if the region is not a regular region if it is a square or rectangle we can easily find out its center by folding that lamina there okay we can easily get but suppose non uh, it is not a regular uh, region so in for random region also you can calculate provided you know the equations of the boundary with the help of double integral so these are the applications actually these are the applications of double integral at the end of the topic you have few of these application as a part of your syllabus you will learn there but in short what you should remember single integral represents the area under the curve double integral can be used to calculate the area as well as a volume okay so that about introduction introduction to the double integral we'll see the examples on double integral in the next session okay thank you we have main four types in uh, evaluating the double integral so in the type one you will learn when the limits are given when the limits of double integral are given so just we are going to evaluate the integral one by one we'll evaluate the inner integral first and then the outer one okay that is a simple rule to evaluate the double integral if you are good in evaluating the definite integral remember you have to evaluate two definite integral inner integral you have to evaluate first and then the outer one in the type two instead of giving the limits we are given a region so on that region we have to evaluate the double integral so from the region from the region first we have to find out the limits from 
once we get the limit, we evaluate like the type one only, one by one. So that is the extra part that you have to do it in the type two. In the type three, we, we learn the change of order of integration. Uh, so many times the inner integral is a difficult to evaluate. In such a case, we need the change of order, change of order of integration, and the integration becomes a simple, we can evaluate it. So that is a use of the change of order of integration. And the last type, the type number four, we evaluate the double integral in polar coordinates. Okay, uh, particularly it is useful uh, whenever the region of integration is symmetric about origin, for example, circle or ellipse, or a part of circle or ellipse, always it is a better to evaluate the double, double integral in a polar coordinates. So integral become a very, very simple, calculations become simple. That is the purpose to evaluate the double integral over polar coordinates. Yes, now in the next session, we'll learn the examples on the double integral. Okay, thank you.